What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Burrow77, coming to you live with another College Hoop show. It's Tipsy Tuesday, and we got 32 games tipping off at 6.30 p.m. going all night. So let's get right into it here with a little look at how we did over the weekend. George Washington plus nine didn't work out for us. Thought they would have a little bit better of a showing there on the road. UMass at home is is something we're going to talk about here later. But uh, George Washington did kind of make it a game there at the end. They were down almost 20 uh, or maybe even a little bit more than 20 at a couple of points. But they dug it out um, to about 14, just couldn't get us the cover. I wasn't alone in liking this bet. As you see, we talked about it at plus nine. This line ended up closing at plus five and a half. So I wasn't the only one on this line and who made a mistake. That'll happen. Richmond, they continue to be an absolute wagon for us, home or away. They cover the one and a half like we talked about taking the points. If you took the money line at plus 105 like we did over on Discord, then you cashed that as well. Georgia. Wow, they were down 30 points at one point. Um, the Kentucky, they stuck in there. They played hard. They ground out the game. It covers the plus 11 and a half that we talked about on the show. This swung all the way out to plus 14.5 before we saw some market buyback. That is actually where we ended up grabbing it conveniently uh, for the Discord. It's just one of those things. We, we kind of timed the market right on that one and, and got the high end. But it doesn't matter because Georgia was able to hit a bunch of garbage time points, uh, played tough, brought it back, ended up closing this within nine. So, hey, whatever line you got it on, it cashed. BYU plus two and a half. Look, this is this is tough. It's a shame. Uh, BYU came out. They were up 16 at half. They were up 20 a couple of times in the first half there. Um, TTU, very tough barn, like I said. Found their shot. Three balls started falling for them. They didn't keep falling for BYU. Um, so BYU ended up losing this game outright and blowing the cover with some late foul situations there. Um, tough loss. Look, if you have a, a an underdog on the road that goes up 20 points, finishes the first half at plus 16, that might be a, a good opportunity to hedge. I... I Personally, grabbed a live middle um, here, so it was a wash for me. But, yeah, it stinks. I thought BYU could have had that game outright, and they were dominant in the first half. They showed you why they could have, but they just weren't able to get done there on the road. UConn minus two slash the money line. Look, heartbreaker, garbage three uh, from Nova to end the game. Three quarters court, shoving it up. Has absolutely no business hitting it. Makes it in a buzzer beater um, from Steph Curry range. Like, eh, look, I, I can't do anything about that. The, the situations like that are going to happen in college basketball. Nine, nine and a half, 9.9 .9 times out of 10. Those aren't going in. It sucks if you got hooked on the points there. Um, I did mention several, several times that I thought the money line at minus 130 was a good play. I'm taking the minus two because that's why I put on the record. That's what's going on the record. But I did say minus 130 on the money line was a steal. This line ended up walking all the way out to UConn, like minus four, minus four and a half at some places. And the money line got bet all the way down to like minus 180, minus 185, 190. So we got the CLV there. Unfortunately, the late three just ruins any CLV or spread you had. But if you took the money line, you got paid. Season record, Saturday's show. Like I said, I'm owning the minus two on UConn. That's two and three for minus 0.6 units. That brings us to 33, two and 40 in 2024 for minus 4.05 units and uh, 89, three and 84 for plus 0 0.3 units on the season. Again, I risk 0 0.5 units on plus 100 or better. I risk to return 0 0.5 units on minus 101 or shorter. 
just because college basketball is really high volume and we do make a ton of bets. Um, Discord had a really nice run of live plays. Um, we grabbed a lot of those lines that I talked about um, towards the end of the last show as lives because we were doing some other things with soccer, yada, yada, yada. We're slowly building it back. Um, it felt good to have a couple of nice hits on Saturday, only two and three on the show, which I am disappointed about. But we, we had some nice hits. The lean sheet did well. Um, and we were close. We were close with a lot of these reads. And we were on the right side of CLV for a lot of the ones that didn't end up hitting. Not that that is a, a lot of comfort at night. But, hey, you, you understand that we're seeing the markets and, and we're kind of on the right track here. So things are going to keep coming around. And they're going to start coming around quickly, starting with today's best bet, number one. St. Bonaventures is heading down to Duquesne. Bonnies are playing. Uh, the, both of these teams aren't playing their best basketball right now, but I think Bonnies is the better team. We're going to back them plus the three and a half on the road here. And it's for a couple simple reasons. Number one being free throws. Uh, Bonnies, when they get to the line as a team, they're knocking down 78.8% from the stripe. That's number five in the nation. Um, when you knock down free throws at that high of a clip, you're going to be able to close tight games. Um, like I mentioned, both teams have had some bad performances lately. Bonnies has lost three of their last four, and Duquesne has lost five in a row. They both have played a different cold schedule and this is a good get right spot for both squads bonnie's in my opinion has been playing the better basketball and has been more consistent even throughout their losses uh bonnie's has been able to beat teams like vcu away this season um and there's just not a lot of ton of wins i respect on duquesne's schedule uc irvine and, and bradley are Okay wins, I guess. Bradley kind of just started getting hot and earning my respect after that um, after that loss to Duquesne. Uh, that's that's before you know they played SIU. That's before they started hitting their free throws. Before they started getting hot. So I, I really rate Bonnie's beating VCU away, Akron on a neutral floor, OK State on a neutral floor. And even though they did lose to George Mason on the road, I really respect that George Mason team, especially in their own building. I thought they played a tight game and kept it close. Um, this is going to come down to who makes their three threes and who defends threes. Bonnie's and Duquesne both um, have a preference for the perimeter shot. They like to step outside. They're one of the farther, they're two of the farther away teams from the basket when they are making their attempts. Bonnie's has very, very good perimeter defense, whereas Duquesne's is mid. It's kind of suspect. Um, so we'll see a lot of three balls. Bonnie's likes to sl slow down the pace of play. They have a really high shooting percentage and, and controlling the rock and controlling the pace of play is going to be paramount here for a Bonnie's team um, that, that I think is better defensively. They're better from behind the arc. Um, I, I think they're overall the better team. And then when they do get inside and they do get to the paint and they work the glass better than Duquesne here, um, when they draw contact and get to the free throw line, they knock them down. And those are all things I look for in a tight game here. I think Bonnie's is is more prone to a get right game here on the road after a tough road loss to Mason. Uh, Duquesne, like I mentioned, they lost five in a row um, and just have had a terrible spell of basketball going on. I don't think getting right at home here is in the cards for Duquesne. So we'll keep it moving. Um up next, we're going back to UMass. Um, we're taking UMass minus two or the money line here because it's, again, it's kind of like UConn. It's sitting at minus 130, minus 135. There's value in both. UMass um, is hosting St. Joe's at 7 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. And UMass has been an absolute wagon in their own building. Um, is, is it fool's gold? I think we're going to find out here. They blow teams out. They blew out George Washington. They've blown out Duquesne. They've blown out UMass Lowell, who's an in-state, you know, same school rival. Uh, that's always a really tough game. And they blew out USF. So UMass has been putting double digits on people at home. 
uh, and just completely blowing the doors off. And St. Joe's only credible away win is a gritty, tough, multi-team event tournament game versus Nova. And since then, they've lost to College of Charleston on the road, uh, University of Rhode Island, who I do ex- respect. I think they have a good program. And St. Louis, who lost their number one point scorer, starts a lot of young freshman international kids. They're very inconsistent. Um, St. Joe's just, they haven't moved the needle for me at all this season on the road. They've been really, really poor on the road. And UMass has been incredibly strong in their own building. So I'm going to take the, the, the this UMass squad, who by all the metrics, does a lot of things I don't like where St. Joe's does. But that didn't work out for me with George Washington. It hasn't worked out for me fading anybody against UMass at home because they have been so dom- dominant. Um, so, yeah, uh, and, and St. Joe's is just playing really poor away. So give me UMass minus the points or take the money line if you want to be safe in their own gym. Home slight favorites. I'm calling it home dogs. Home dogs are barking here. Um, so give me UMass. Keeping it moving, we're taking VCU minus four and a half. They host Loyola Chicago over on uh, CB, CBS Sports Network at 7 p.m. Wow, that was tough to say. Uh, but the Rams here, minus four and a half. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. I don't really have a ton of spec for this Loyola Chicago team, even though they have just put together three nice wins in a row away at St. Joe's versus UMass and so that was in Chicago and at Fordham. Fordham's been quietly putting together some nice results. They challenged Bonnie's, you know, they, they've challenged George Washington. They have a really small gym, but it, it is a tough place to play. So I do put a little bit of respect on Fordham's name. Again, those are nice wins for Loyola Chicago. None of those teams are VCU. VCU protects their home court, and they just they just got you know a gut. Or they this was back on January 9th. They got a gutsy road win at George Mason, who, as I mentioned earlier, I have a lot of respect for in their own gym. VCU is trending in the right direction right now. VCU's free throws will absolutely crush Loyola. VCU uh, shoots 77% from the stripe. That's good enough for 25 in the country. Uh, And and they get to the line a lot. Loyola Chicago isn't the best defenders, especially not in the paint, especially not around the rim, especially not on the offensive glass where VCU is going to go to work and beat the brakes off of Loyola. Um, VCU rebounds incredibly well at both ends of the floor. Um, I find it very tough to believe that Loyola Chicago is going to be able to win a game when VCU is able to clean up the glass and knock down their freebies. Um, I I just think it's going to be really difficult for them. VCU, they're tough on the perimeter and in the paint, and that's where Loyola Chicago likes to score. VCU shoots the three ball significantly better than Loyola Chicago defends the perimeter. And these are three and D teams. Both of these guys like to shoot from the outside. Both of them like to defend the perimeter. VCU has much, much better perimeter D than Loyola Chicago has, and they shoot the three ball better. Um, VCU also can get into the paint. Like I said, they, they turn second chance offensive rebounds into baskets at a very high clip. Um, They love to work the glass. They like to slow the ball down. They like to keep possession. They like to get two or three offensive chances. Um, They like to move the ball around, kick it out to the open shooter. Uh, They rebound really well. So sometimes you can see VCU holding the ball for very, very long on an offensive possession, especially if they rebound and get it two or three times. So VCU, Control the rock, slow the game down, grind it out, and it's going to be really, really hard for Loyola Chicago to dig themselves out of any sort of hole. Um, VCU, they play that smothering defense, possess the rock, make back-breaking threes. Uh, If you get down, especially in their own building, uh, get down on them in their building, 
I, I just don't see Loyola being able to dig themselves out of any sort of double digit deficit here. So give me the Rams minus four and a half. I'm comfortable with that number. I'm comfortable with this all the way out to like maybe minus five and a half or so. I always have a little hesitation on the push and pullback going through minus six. Keeping it moving, we're going to match in. I am an NIU Huskies alum, as you all know. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to back them here. The Toledo Rockets come to town and take on the NIU Huskies at 8 p.m. over on ESPN+. And listen, the Huskies are fun. They're, they're rebuilding their program. They, they have some decent... Uh, you know, older guys there. They have a lot of freshmen, sophomores. Um, this game's going to be fast-paced, and there's going to be a ton of points, opportunities if teams make their shots. Uh, the reason I say that is because NIU was making a ton of shots earlier, and I was taking a lot of overs in their games and making some good money doing it, but their shooting percentage and their ability to score has kind of fallen off recently. Toledo is just better at everything about the game that I think matters uh, in college basketball, free throws, getting contacts, shooting the three, finishing at the rim, transition basketball, uh, playing defense, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Rockets have been at the top of the Mac for four or five years. They've been challenging to win the Mac. I think they won it three seasons in a row, uh, four or five seasons in a row here. And then IU, like I said, is a team that's rebuilding and it's on the uprise. And it's fun to see. And it's it's a fun gym over there at the Convocation Center. Love the bat black paint on the floor. Um, it, it's a really cool gym, but the Rockets are just better at basketball. And they live in the paint. Toledo gets to the paint, they elevate, they finish at the rim. They're in the top 25 in the country at near proximity shots. They also get a lot of contact and go to the free throw line and bang them home. That's going to be really tough for the Huskies who tend to have a lot of guys in foul trouble a lot. So you'll see a lot of opportunities and the NIU loves to shoot the three ball. So if they somehow get hot from deep, they might be able to make this a game. But um, again, the you know it's the Mac. There's not a lot of defense being played here. Um, Toledo's projecting like 86 or 87 points. Right now on the team total, NIU is up there in, you know, the high 70s, low 80s. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that close. I don't think Toledo is that bad at defense. But again, it is an NIU's gym. Um, so this is a high points total. I think the Rockets can bury NIU here. And I think they cover the four and a half pretty comfortably. I'm fine taking this all the way to minus six. Um, so give me the Rockets on the road to handle their business against the Huskies. Last but not least, let me get a sip of my beer first. We got BC taking on Ba Tech on the road. Boston College and Virginia Tech. This is a real coin flip game. Both teams excel at what I think wins college basketball games, much like I mentioned with Toledo. These guys get to the free throw line. They both knock down their free throws. They both know how to control the ball. They don't turn it over a lot. Um, they rebound well, they, they can stay, they know how to manage a game. They manage games very, very well. Boston College, I think we saw that versus um, UNC this weekend. They were inside this same number, six and a half, 37 minutes a game. And then they weren't um, and ended up losing by 10. But I think that, I think that the Tar Heels are a much better team than Vatek. I think that BC is going to be able to grind this out and stay within the number because BC is better at scoring down low and they're able to work the glass a little bit better. This is a really low total over under game and this is a big ass spread. So give me Boston College to cover this big number with a, a game its total is projected very low. Um, and, and I think that Boston College just gets it done here. They're, they've been very competitive in the ACC all season. 
They're a very tough t- team on their court and especially away from their building. Um, they give people fits. They know they don't have the same recruiting, the same NIL draw, the same weight as a lot of these other big time nationally recognized programs, but they are scrappy every single season. So give me Boston College plus the six and a half uh, again at Virginia Tech. And that tips at 9 p.m. over on the ACC network. I can't remember if I said that or not. Anyway, let's get it moving. We'll come over to the recap. We're taking Bonnie's plus the three and a half away at Duquesne. I just think Bonnie's is the better basketball team here. And I love getting three and a half. So we don't get hooked or pushed on the three. St. Joe's at UMass. We're going to see if UMass at home is fool's gold or not. I have a feeling it's not. They blow teams out in their building. Uh, So give me UMass minus two slash the money line for safety if you guys are into that. Uh, Loyola Chicago at VCU. Uh, The Rams are just a better team. This is going to be a very tough building. It's going to be absolutely electric. Give me the Rams minus the four and a half. Toledo Rockets on the road at my NIU Huskies. I'd love to back the Huskies here. Unfortunately, their team just doesn't back up any of the shit I would be able to talk. So give me the Rockets minus four and a half. Last but not least, we have Boston College taking on Vatek. Give me Boston College plus the six and a half. Really like this uh, with the with the half there getting over two full possessions to close out a tight game. Before we get out of here, guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in this weekend. I want to thank everybody who left comments under the YouTube page and on Twitter, social media, stuff like that. Uh, I had a lot of great engagement on on games. So I hope you guys are really all enjoying watching college basketball. I know I am. Saturday was absolutely electric. I probably watched 15, 20 games and a ton, ton of buzzer beaters, a lot of upsets. Yesterday, um, Discord, we went one and one. Not going to lie, we split it. Um, you know, Memphis being upset on the uh, on the road versus Tulane was super fun to watch. So that was cool to see, you know, Tulane protect their own building, take down Memphis, who I think is one of the top 25 teams in the country. And then we took Quinnipatrick at home, really tough, sweaty game. They were down, I want to say 12, with like eight minutes left in the game, slowly dug it out, ended up winning outright at home. So we cashed that on the money line, one and one, a little bit of a push, but I appreciate all you guys. Please be sure to tune in. We will be back Friday night slash Saturday morning, whenever you get around to it for Saturday's college basketball slate. Again, I will be doing my Wednesday night show at 7.30 p.m. Two Foot Talk with my boy Leg. I will be doing my Bet US Spanish La Liga show Thursday at 3 p.m. We went three and two uh, again this week. So, you know, nice little winning week over in Spain with some plus money numbers. So having a good time over there. I appreciate all the support. Please be sure to like, follow, subscribe, check out the research tools list and everything like that. Check out haslammetrics.com. Check out the ATS and over under covers resources I throw down here. And Josh throws down here full lean sheet for Tipsy Tuesday coming tomorrow as well. Let's get the hell out of here. I'm sorry for talking your ear off. I appreciate all you guys. Um, That's Talking Hoops with Bar Oaks. Peace.